Hello students, Michael Sanchez here. Welcome to Song Sunday. Every Sunday at 7 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, I'm going to be teaching a class on how to play certain songs in the violin. And uh, being that it's the holidays, I'm going to be teaching out of the um, Christmas, Easy Christmas Instrumental Solos book. Uh, we've done about three classes so far teaching different songs, and today we're going to be learning how to play uh, Frosty the Snowman. And then also just answering any sort of tips, um, anything you guys are wondering about as far as technique. I'm certainly here to help. So first I want to just introduce our students today. We first have with us um, Eric from Canada. Would you like to say hello, Eric? Hello to everyone. Hello, Michael. Thank you very much for joining us. And we also have with us Sophie from West Virginia. Thank you, Sophie, for joining us. Cindy from Chicago, how are things going over there? Everything's going good, Michael. Thanks. Thank you for joining us. And we also have with us uh, Debbie. Hi, Michael, and everybody in the class. Thank you, Debbie, for joining us. Uh, so you just started playing recently. Uh, how was how's your last few days been going um, playing? I've been doing a lot of the pizzicato, the picking, to just to get my fingers down because I don't think I have the bow grip or hold right yet. I'm too squeaky. So I'm just working on the fingers. Very good. That's actually uh, an excellent way to, uh, to practice because what it does, it limits uh, just you working on your left hand instead of having to worry about that pesky right hand, which everybody struggles with at first. So. Um, yeah, that's a great idea, and I uh, actually teach that like in my be beginner classes, so uh, keep that up, and that will definitely go a long way. It will allow you to really focus in on the uh, knuckles up and different things. And we also have with us Susan, um, a brand new student as well to the violin. Hello, how are you doing today? Hi, Michael. Hi, everybody. I'm doing great, besides being cold. Other than that, fine, thank you. I think it's uh, it's pretty much cold everywhere uh, that we're at. So I don't know if anybody's <laughs> warm right now. So um, yeah, we had our parade on Saturday. I mentioned that in yesterday's class. But yeah, we our students were extremely cold. They walked uh, for an hour, and uh, their their toes were about to freeze off. And uh, they wanted to play. Um, they've been actually working on a song for quite a while, and I had to tell them that uh, we couldn't do it just because it was too cold. But they're going to be able to play it in the recital, which is coming up soon. So, we have a great song uh, we're going to learn today. So, Frosty the Snowman uh, is in the key of C major, so we should probably start with just uh, playing the C major scale, which uh, has all low twos. And just to show you guys what a low two means, it basically means that the second finger, which is normally in this position when we first start learning the violin, is going to be in this position. This is called a low two. High two, low two. So um, in, the D, in the C major scale, there's low two on the D string, low two on the A string, and low two on the E string. So these three strings, it's all in the low position. And on the G string, it's the only one that's in the high position. So high two, low two, low two, low two. It's like that. So the G major scale starts off on third finger on the G string. So we're going to go ahead and just start by playing the G major scale. What's really important with the scales, students, is to use the whole bow. Uh, I find a lot of students like to kind of rush the scales. They like to use just a little bit of bow and kind of get them done quick. A lot of times the reason why it's harder to get to the tip is because um, you could easily have a tense bow grip. Uh, so basically when you start to go away from your body with the bow, really try to just relax your hand. It's very easy for students to kind of grip as they go down. Because anything that kind of comes away from us, it's easy to want to like hold on, make sure it doesn't fall. But with the violin, as the bow goes away from you, we don't want to grip harder. We want to keep it relaxed, which is uh, which is a struggle for a lot of students. Um, but if you find yourself not using the whole bow, there's a really good chance that you're gripping the bow too hard. Um, there, 
it could easily be a chance that your thumb is tense. Make sure that your thumb looks like this, uh, V-shaped. Um, if you're any bit like this, I call this banana thumb, you're probably pushing up against the bow, which makes it hard to get to the tip. So you should be able to kind of circle your thumb like this, really, really relaxed. Make sure that this muscle right here is really loose, so this shouldn't be tense. So when you're doing the scales, really try to focus on staying relaxed with the thumb as you're going to the tip. And with that adjustment, if you guys feel that um, you don't have as much control of the bow, that is totally normal. That's, uh, that actually means you're doing something, something right. That means that you're relaxing muscles. Uh, you won't drop the bow. Uh, if you feel like you will, maybe go into a padded room. But <laughs> you, sh you shouldn't drop the bow. Uh, it just might feel that way. So work on just getting to the tip. And then as you, and as you start to come the other way, just really try to focus on bending your wrist. So I've shown you guys the drills on the, the um, balancing the quarter on the wrist, coming up and down. No matter where you're at in the bow stroke, the wrist should always be level. What you guys could do is you guys could grab your arm and just practice doing this without moving any of your arm, keeping the wrist level. That's exactly what you should be doing when you're bowing, when you're playing the scales. So watch my wrist. <laughs> my thumb is curved. Those are all tricky things to do, but certainly help a lot with uh, warming up. And uh, eventually they're going to translate into your songs. So when you start to learn songs like this, The Frosty Snowman, you're going to start to get a good, clean sound because of the way that you're doing the drills. Um, so today's uh, biggest tips, I think, for you for technique are bending the wrist, coming up bow, and then relaxing your thumb when going to the tip. It's all about using the small muscles. You guys have any questions about that? Please, uh, please raise your hand. I also um, open up to the audience. Anybody out there that's uh, interested in asking questions, please feel free to anytime. You must be logged into the Google Plus platform to be able to ask questions. Uh, it's really easy to do that. You just basically um, go to Google, type in Google Plus, uh, fill out a profile. It's kind of like Facebook for Google. And um, then you search my profile, Violin Tutor Pro, and uh, you'll be able to join the classes and uh, participate as an audience member. Very good. So um, I would recommend warming up with the scale, uh, C major scale for this particular song, because uh, that's the key that the song is in. So as you can see here, there's no sharps, no flats, which means that this song is in C major. So anytime you come up to a second finger, like here, that's going to be a low two. So second finger low on the D string, second finger low on the A string, touching the first finger. And remember, low two means next to the one, like this. Make sure that's a nice half step. Make sure that your thumb is even with the first finger as well. Something to maybe just glance at, see if you guys are doing it properly. Make sure the thumb isn't way back here. It should be always even with where your first finger should go. So I've got thumb, first finger, low two. All right. So let's uh, teach you guys the first little phrase of the song. Uh, can you guys raise your hand if you have the book? I know Cindy has the book. Um, anybody else? That's fine if you don't. Just wondering. Just Cindy? Very good. Okay. So here's the beginning of the song. So we have third finger on the D. That's the half note. And then we have first finger on the D string. And then here's a low two on the D string. And then three space. And then low two. So it's... Like that. The second note of the song, the D1, is a dotted quarter note, which means it's held for one and a half beats. So the first one is held for two beats. One, two, 
This one is one and a half, one, and then eighth note, two. Just like that. Cindy, would you like to try the, uh, the first little phrase there for me? Sure, that'd be good. Very good. Cindy, I love your stickers. Uh, that really helps a lot. And uh, if anybody out there doesn't have stickers, I highly recommend it because uh, it really helps students to find their finger placement. Um, notice, go ahead and Cindy, if you can show the stickers again just so the students can see. But basically she's ha she has it to where, um, you know, she knows where to put the first finger, the, the high two, the three, and the four. And those are actually on very well. So I don't know if you put those on yourself, Cindy, but they look really good. Um, so I highly recommend that to you guys. I do have a video on my Violin Tutor Pro website. Um, uh, it's lesson three. It teaches you exactly how to put stickers on. And I do have the stickers available at my uh, Superior Violins website, www.superiorviolins.com. I know a lot of you guys have ordered them for me. Um, so, yeah, stickers uh, look great. It, you actually played it really well in tune, Cindy. Uh, make sure just to keep working on getting the knuckles up a little higher. This really helps to... Um, play fast and accurately to just be moving the fingers and not so much um, being down here and then having to kind of reach. Okay. So just a little bit higher than um, fingers, but other than that, um, good intonation. How's your, uh, how's your bow hand doing? Tell me about just uh, your feeling on your right hand. It's practice, practice, practice. You know, I um, go up against the wall and make sure that I cannot be moving my arm in saw fashion, but rather being able to use my wrist a lot more. And um, I'm a professional massage therapist, so I've been doing a lot of bow hand while I'm working on people, getting some of those muscles <laughs> working. I'll hold my steering wheel in bow hand and sit with pencils exercising. So, you know, any chance I can think about bow hand, I'm eating, sleeping, and breathing it. Wow, that is some dedication right there. Yes, I think two days ago I, I heard somebody talking about uh, they're sitting at work bored and they're using a pencil to kind of like you know do the bow grip. So you guys are you guys are being very creative. I like that. So um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, anything that's going to get us to relax. I, I can imagine you um, being um, able to flex well with, with being a massage therapist. So it's a matter of relaxing some tension, but then you have the flexibility. I would guess. <laughs> So actually, it's the opposite way. So really? yeah, to protect some of my muscles, the finer muscles, so I don't get any tendonitis or anything. Um, I actually use different muscles that inhibit my bow hand. So while you would think it would be a good idea, it's not always the best. <laughs> ah, okay, that's interesting. Um, I never had a massage therapist as a student, so that's very good. So the next actually, one I get. I'm working on Trans Siberian Orchestra in December when they come. I'm sorry? I work on a lot of musicians, so I'm working on uh, Trans-Siberian Orchestra at the end of December when they come to Chicago. So. Oh, my. That is so cool. Yeah. I, I'm actually, Christy mentioned she wanted me to go uh, go see them here with her soon. Uh, I heard they're really good. I've never heard them uh, live before. That's cool. Yeah. So, yeah, everything else looks really good. Uh, I can tell you're starting to build um, better transitions. Uh, sounds actually better than last week. For sure. Yeah. Well, I'm standing up, so that always helps. Right. Right. So good. Good work. And uh, what what Cindy was mentioning earlier, as far as the um, flexibility in the wrist, that's such a good drill to do. Um, to be up against the wall. So put everything up against the wall um, from here on down, and just work on moving your wrist and your index. And I find that students are able to do this. Um, without the bow in their hand pretty easily because there's no they're not tense at all there's nothing in their hand so they're able to do this pretty easily with the index and wrist but the second this comes in the hand tension comes so now all of a sudden they're they're not able to move very well because their pinky is tense their thumb is tense so just like you're doing just like right here you should be doing the same exact thing with the bow in the hand don't let yourself get tense. Don't think about you that you're going to drop it. Just your thumb, between your thumb and your index, 
that's just kind of putting it in a little lock spot, but there's no need to, to grab. So don't, don't call it a bow grip, call it a bow hold. <laughs> so this is a great way to warm up, just doing this. And then if you can, just try to play some notes back and forth with just moving your wrist. Because, yeah, when, you're, when you have the bow stroke and, and you're trying to get a good sound, if you're using the big muscles, it's going to cause um, scratchy sound. Uh, students, raise your hand if you've got any sort of scratchy, bouncy sound this, in, recently. <laughs> that should be everybody. I, I, I'll raise my hand. Um, so every time you get a bouncy or, or crunchy, squeaky sound, it's always because um, something to do with your you're not using the small muscles. This is what it's all about right here. You should be using everything from here on up to transition, which is tough. It's easy to do this, or easy to cross like this, instead of like this. So I recommend you guys work on that. Uh, Sophie, you mentioned uh, that you felt you had some tension in your, in your bow hand. And uh, when you were playing that song for me the other day, um, you, you said there's a little bit of a, uh, you know, transitions, you weren't getting the best transitions. Um, so I think this would be a really good exercise for you, as well as for a lot of students, um, just to just to do this. Um, and then try to play up against the, the wall. So don't move anything but your, your wrist. And just kind of flick your hand and only use just a little bit of bow. You don't have to use a lot of bow, just like this. Make sure there's nothing going on here. It kind of takes you kind of throwing your wrist, throwing it. So don't don't do that. Throw the wrist. Very good. Okay. So um, does anybody have any questions about the uh, the technique, the uh, wrist uh, practice? All right. Very good. So we just learned the beginning of Frosty. Um, so we just played. Next part, we have one, two, low two eighth notes, then three, low two, one, open. Now I find a lot of times, uh, students, when you have a third finger by itself, like this, a lot of times what students do is they have their fingers either way up in the air or they're kind of just in a random spot. They're kind of just worried about the note in the moment and not about what's coming up. I see this all the time. So if you guys can, put your finger down, but then while that finger is down while you're playing that note, try to adjust your other fingers in the back while you're playing this note. So ba -da -bum. make sure the two is ready to go and you just lift up the finger. It's a lot easier to just lift up your finger than it is to put it down then try to like frantically try to find it. Like that. So um, that's a situation there. Just watch how I always have, because of the key signature, my one and two are just kind of always in this default position. That helps me to play more in tune. So watch, watch how my one and two are always there. See that? Now I just lift the fingers up, and I'm right at the one. So always try to kind of keep your fingers in these spots. If d Depending on the key signature, if you're in D, then you want it to be here. But since we're in C, it's here. Uh, Susan and Debbie, you might not have done low twos yet, uh, so don't worry. Um, it's just basically a different way to do your second finger. Um, so, I mean, this is what you've learned. You've learned the high two. Um, this is the low two, which is just a different note. So, like, on the D string, this is a, the, an F natural. This is an F sharp. You've been learning F sharp. On the A string, it's a C natural. You've been learning a C sharp. If that's confusing, please email me or uh, ask me any questions you have. Yeah, Susan, go ahead. Oh, you're muted. Oh, can't hear you. You're uh, muted. Okay. There you go. 
Okay. How can you tell on that music sheet that you uh, showed us, how can you tell whether it's, um, I wrote it down, whether it's a low or a high scale? Excellent question. As so, far as the notes go. Question. Yes. So basically, um, it's all about the key signature. So right here, um, Susan, this is what we call the key signature. And every time in a, in a song, there, it's going to have um, either a few sharps, a few flats, or in this situation, it doesn't have either. And if it doesn't have either, it's in the key of C, which means that all the Fs, all the Cs are natural, which means they're low. Okay. Okay. So F is low, C is low. Um, if okay. there was two sharps, it would be in D, which means that it would be high two and high two. So. Okay. That's a good question. I've been teaching a lot on theory lately um, on, on the Hangout, and uh, I just recently did one um, yesterday that was a really good class on um, understanding key signatures. I think that would be a really good one for you to watch, for sure. Cool. All right, so uh, that was kind of the beginning of the song. Uh, let me just recap that one more time, and then we'll kind of go on from there. All right, here's, the, here's some more of it. One, two. Third finger on the D. Now low two on the A, now one on the D, now three, slur eighth note four, and don't do open, <laughs> three, four, three, low two, one, two, three. Just like that. Uh, Cindy, I hope you don't mind me uh, picking on you. You're the only one with the book. Uh, could you play up to there for us? Okay. Starting from the beginning or just starting from where we paused? Please. Yeah, beginning's fine. All right. <laughs> Y'all have to get the book now, so I'm not the only one. <laughs> Excellent, excellent, very good. Um, your twos were perfect. Um, your threes were in tune. You reached for the four nice. Uh, your first fingers were a little bit flat in that it wasn't quite far enough, so it could be uh, you were maybe here instead of being here. So make sure it's a little bit higher up. Um, also, Cindy, if you can for me, um, go ahead and put your third finger down, and then I want you to put your four, four down. I'm just going to make an, um, an observation. Uh, something that you know you can work on that will be good for this week, but basically it just has to do with the knuckles. So put your three down. Okay, now put your four down. Perfect. That what you just did there was perfect. Earlier though, you were like kind of more like this, and you kind of reached up as you went for the four. Uh huh. <laughs> so um, yeah, that looks a lot better. Your angles are excellent. They they they're perfect. So very good. All right, so that's the beginning. And I just noticed that uh, Sophie has her book. I guess she, um, she does also have the book. Yay! <laughs> Sophie, would you like to play the beginning? Um, make sure you're unmuted. There you go. Excellent. Um, one thing, Sophie, uh, as you were going for the threes, what kind of happened a little bit was um, your two kind of came with it, and then you kind of had to make that movement to come back for the two. So as you go, bum, 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 as you're going for this, try not to let the two come with it. Bum, 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 because now all of a sudden I just have to go here for the low two instead of doing 
Bum, bum, bum. And I have to come back like that. But you're just right here if you're if you're staying back. Go ahead and try it again. See if you can keep your two uh, keep your two more back. Good. Excellent. So yeah, just keep working on it as well, keeping the knuckles up a little bit higher, and then just trying to really just move the fingers for the notes. Uh, a little bit of the hand moving for the fours. Uh, that's pretty much everybody, I think. Uh, that's, that's plays. So you have to just work on that. Um, uh, that's everybody, though. Very good. So that's the beginning of the piece. Um, let me go to the chorus here real quick. So this, it does repeat it again. Um, similar. So this is the next part of it. Here's where it gets a little bit different. It goes. So basically right there we have a fourth finger on the D, and then the following note is a half step, G sharp. And then the three you just basically put back to the normal spot. So it's four, high three, normal three, bum, bum, bum. Make sure when you're doing that, you're not moving the hand. So this is bum, bum, bum. Just fingers. Bum, bum, bum. Like that. Um, so that's kind of a tricky spot. And then here's the, um, the chorus. So that's a good song. I'll uh, just give you another glimpse of the music here. So Frosty the Snowman uh, in the key of C. Very good. So next week I think we'll do another one of these. Um, probably Hark the Herald Angels Sing. That's next on the list. It's a good, good song. Um, but uh, yeah, if you guys have any other questions, um, please feel free to um, email me, rivertownviolin at hotmail.com. You can live chat me anytime on my websites, uh, violentutorpro.com or uh, superiorviolence.com. Uh, it's Thanksgiving week coming up, so I hope you guys are excited about that. Um, got some, uh, some more classes though this week coming up. I will not be teaching on Thursday, obviously Thanksgiving, um, here in the United States uh, next week Thursday. But uh, everything else should be on, and I look forward to working with you guys and just uh, furthering your, your skill on the violin. So tomorrow is uh, Homeschool Mondays at noon. Um, Tuesday is going to be a great class. I'm going to be talking about the top five bad habits of the violin. Uh, it's going to be uh, <laughs> uh, Tuesday night at uh, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard. Um, Wednesday, uh, Wisdom Wednesday, uh, students over 40 uh, can participate in that class and um, that will be uh, 9 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Thank you guys so much for watching. Appreciate your time and uh, please email me again if you have any questions. Hope you guys have a good day. Thank you.